Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, March 3rd, 2022, and this is the week in charts. I'm just want to thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight. Appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I don't have the slides up tonight. I thought we would just focus on the charts tonight. Also had some technical issues earlier. Anyway, um, as you know, all predictions about the future, a lot of stuff can up to me now and then. Thank everybody for attending, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're watching on Facebook, I appreciate that. Anyway, let's just jump right into the markets and then we'll take a look at, uh, in fact, let's take a look at crypto first and get that out of the way. And if there's anything you want me to cover in crypto, you can go ahead and ask me that now. There's not a whole lot of excitement right now in crypto, although it might get interesting here soon. I'm still short a few of these in here, I've, I've withstood some pretty serious retraces, but for the most part, most of these pairs or and downtrends and they're in no particular order and you can see i'm long this one because it's going up and i don't have much in it believe me but you can see the most pairs are below the 30 ema and i call that landry light if we take a look at stock charts acp and we put the landry light in there you can see it a little bit better over here and then if we go in and take a look at some of the crypto it's a little easier to see and just again in no particular order maybe alphabetical order look at some of these and look at the bottom of your screen and that's the landry light meaning that the lows i'm sorry the highs i guess the lows too the highs are less than the moving average you notice how you've got a lot of red down there meaning that most of these things are in downtrend so a while back and i'm trying to think of his name i guess it was sorkin said we're either in 19 96 with crypto or 1999 well based on where we are now at least it sure looks like we're in 1999 meaning stocks went down pretty hard after they went straight up through 96 through 99 as you know but anyway as you go through these you can see lots and lots of landry light for the most part to the downside in most of these so crypto is still in a bear market let's take a look at bitcoin since a lot of interest there bitcoin popped a couple of days ago, came back in today. I wouldn't rush out and buy it just yet, but it does seem to find support down here when it gets in the mid 30,000 price range. So that's Bitcoin. If you guys want to take a look at any pairs while I'm here, I'd be happy to do so. If not, we'll hop right in to the overall market. All right, let's take a look at the, the P's. And if you guys want to start asking about individual stocks, Go ahead and do so now since we're focusing on charts mostly tonight. SP 500 tried to rally a little bit, came back in. It too has lots of Landry light. In fact, let's just pop back over here just for one second and take a look at that. Let's take a look at the spiders, be good as anything to look at. And you can see with a 30 EMA, which again has become my favorite EMA. I can grab this thing. You can see we got lots of red to the downside. Notice we had one little bar right here. We had a little upside Landry light. Let's check the piece. Cash. Yeah, I looked at that one tonight, John. I agree with you on that. We'll take a look at that in just one second. Good, uh, good eye on that. A little cheaper stock. That's why I didn't make it a recommendation. But yeah, I agree with you. So, so far, it just looks like the S&P is pulling back. You can see lots and lots of Landry light. A little kiss of the moving average right here. One thing you could do, and I was talking about this at tonight's service, is you can look to play these pullbacks to the EMA, especially if you get a pivot above the EMA. And as we go through charts tonight, keep an eye on that, on the charts that have the EMA. And that's a good little setup in and of itself. But you can see lots and lots of red down here. So S&P 500 still has lots of red. Now, one thing some have been talking about is the fact that we've had kind of some double bottom action, not so much in the P, but P's, but more in the Russell, which we'll take a look at. I wouldn't rush out and buy that double bottom in and of itself. In fact, let's take a look at that right now. As you can see, the rusty, you got a minor double bottom. I wouldn't get too excited about that. The prominent trend, trend so far remains down, as you can see. And I think what would cause the most pain and the most amount of people would be if we took out these lows in here because a lot of people will look at that at that saying oh it's support down there we should be okay and then i think if it takes it out it could get fairly ugly fairly quickly 
NASDAQ composite looking pretty ugly there. Gapped higher, came down, closed weak. Outside day down, not the end of the world, but obviously it's got to stop at some point. Gold and commodity doing okay in here, just off of multi-year high. So that's a good thing if you're a bull in gold. The gold stocks also looking pretty good. And the metals and mining overall are doing fairly well in here. So we could see some setups soon in metals and mining. And as you go through most of these sectors, though, with a few exceptions, such as obviously defense, given the situation in the world, defense is kind of breaking out in here. We're getting to pull back a little bit already, though, but we'll see. There's not a whole lot to get excited here just yet, within defense, that is, but I'm keeping an eye out just in case. A lot of areas, as I've sort of alluded to, making these minor double bottoms, but they're within a choppy downtrend. So I wouldn't see that as a. Um, as a reason to buy in and of itself. Most areas, manufacturing, as you can see, lots of land life on the downside so far, just pulling back. Materials and construction, not doing so well in here. I think home builders is within M and C. Home builders, a lot of home builders set up tonight, lots of home builders on the landry list tonight. Some retail on the landry list too, as far as potential shorts. And yeah, let's take a look at retail. Real quick, if I can find it, there it is. So retail sort of looks like the S&P 500, but so far it looks like the big blue arrow is pointing down on that one. Let's take a look at bonds. Bonds had a little bit of a bounce today. They got whacked yesterday though. And as you can see, remaining in a pretty serious downtrend. Bonds down, rates up. One thing that's scary in here is the dollar. Not to confuse the issue with facts, but I read where, and if you look at the M1, if that's what you're using for supply, 80% of the, I'm sorry, now I've already forgotten the numbers. Is it 80%? 80% of all the currency in circulation, all the dollars in circulation, were printed over the last two years. I'll have to double check that. If somebody's on Facebook now, double check that post that I put out on that earlier this week. But anyway, you can see. Dollar's doing okay, and that's a good thing. I'm hearing just, you know, I get a lot of news through osmosis and hear different things and watch certain videos and such. And the freezing of the Russian assets could actually have a negative impact. And also, Russia might be pissed at us for, our, for doing that, and they could dump dollars on the market. So that could be pretty scary, especially since, as John just confirmed, 80% of the supply has been printed in the last two years, and that's pretty damn scary. That's a case for Bitcoin. Again, not to confuse the issue with facts. Could also be a case for gold. Unfortunately, gold's tricky, and Bitcoin's tricky too. I'm probably going to do, as part of a piece, something on paper Bitcoin. And what I mean by paper Bitcoin is in the... Was it in the 30s when the U.S. confiscated the gold and issued gold certificates? And allegedly, this little piece of paper is worth, it's more than its weight, I guess, in gold. <laughs> they gave you a whopping $32 for your gold. So that created sort of like a paper gold. And then you got derivatives and all these other things and ETFs and such. And, and to my knowledge, not one of the ETFs out there has, has, hasn't gone under scrutiny for not actually having the goal they claim it does. And now you've got Bitcoin ETFs or mutual funds, so to speak. Uh, there's not an official Bitcoin ETF, but there's GBTC, which is sort of, I guess, like a, it's a stock, but it, it's invested in Bitcoin. And, you know, do they really have as much Bitcoin as they say they do? So there's a whole lot of paper problems when it comes to an asset like gold and Bitcoin, even though Bitcoin has a maximum of 21 million, about 18 million in circulation now, you would you would think that Bitcoin should really, really be going up. And so far it really hasn't gone up that much, but you look at things that are happening, like the truckers got cut off in Canada from the GoFundMe, and then people started sending them Bitcoin. So, it's it's good or bad, however you want to look at it, because you could do these type of transactions outside of central authority. 
Anyway, let's take a look at one or two more sectors in here. Semiconductors remaining a downtrend, have a little bit of that double bottom action, but this, I wouldn't rush out and buy that in and of itself. In fact, if you're familiar with some of the classic stuff that I've done, I have a pattern called the double top knockout, where you look for a bit of a minor double top and you look for a knockout bar after that, you look to go long. And everybody kind of thinks it's a top based on the double top and they kind of get faked out. By the way, everything I do has a, a psychological backing if you're new to what I do, and everything is conceptually correct, and that's something that I actually woke up writing about this morning. I know you probably want to party with me. <laughs> but the conceptually correct means it's based on the psychology of the market, and then I was writing about trends also, and sometimes trends can be, be get more trends. So let's say you've got a downtrend, and it's putting pressure on people to sell because they might want to retire, they might want to pay off the house, or they might need some friggin' money to buy groceries. I saw somebody was one of those meme videos today, and they were showing that Walmart, at least in this one place, had meat chained up with like a little electronic um, alarm on it, like it was uh, some sort of, you know, laptop or something. <laughs> so you couldn't leave the store with it. But anyway, but the more a market drops the more pressure it's going to put on people to sell stocks. Some people buy stocks when they have money. Some people sell stocks when they need money. Quoting Tom McClellan's late mother, Marion, and she says a few more things too, as I quote almost every week. But the bottom line is the more a security drops or a market drops, the more pressure it puts on more and more people. And sometimes that selling can be get more selling. All right, any questions about the overall market? Anything you want me to take a look at before we jump into individual issues? George wants to talk about Alpha as a first thrust. I do like that stock. It is a cheapie though. And do you know what they do? It says infrastructure, but that could be that could mean anything. It's only had a few days off its low. I prefer a few more days in this rally off of lows, but it's pretty impressive rally so far. I would use a fairly liberal entry on this and a fairly liberal stop, but it's a little bit on the dangerous side. HV of about 86. I'd almost prefer if this thing had bottomed out for months and months and months and months and months and months and months. And months okay. But it is technically a first thrust, as you pointed out. And I stopped short of putting it on a Landry list tonight because just probably a little too crazy on the speculative side. Let me see if I have bow ties in here somewhere. Yeah, it's almost a bow tie. It looks The chart looks a little different with the bow ties on there. But it's almost a bow tie, so it's okay. I, I, I'll, give you a, I'll give you an okay on that one. AMR on knockout, push down, AMR. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. You've got OK volume given its price. OK, I don't know what the spread is, but boy, look at that HV. Oh, never mind. Looking at the wrong thing. This is a new, this is an indicator for my purposes. I'll just show you what I'm doing with that real quick. little bonus lesson in here. And this is supposed to be, I think, Lab U or Lab D. So all this is right here is the percent of the actual range, high minus low. Okay, compared to the average true range for 10 days, and that's pretty much it. If you want the actual formula, let me see if I could pop it up. No, I, I can't do it on the fly, but I could put the formula if you like under members resources. If you're not a member, let me know and I could see about getting it to you some other way. Anyway, um, let's go back to AMR. So, AMR. 370,000 shares on average, 64 is the HV. So yeah, that looks pretty darn good, George. Good eye on that. Uh, a nice little knockout bar, as you said, but this thing would maybe lap lower to 110 and then sell off to like 90. That would be the mother of all buy signals for that. What type of metal? Is it a metal? Alpha metal, metallurgical, I can't read this, but basic materials. Be interesting to see what they do, just FYI, okay? But yeah, that looks good, George. So on a pullback, absolutely. I know you get a little excited sometimes and probably don't wait for setups and do intraday trading and things like that. 
but focus on focus on trends and daily setups and get that down pat and then work your way to other markets and other things. Okay, coal, thank you. Yeah, so our coal stock in the portfolio, I don't believe you, George. <laughs> George says, Roger, that. We'll see, huh? I'll see what's happening to Facebook. I saw you got into one the other day without a trigger. You told me it was an intraday trigger, huh? A, a, a something, a day trade. ARLP is one we're long, and part of the, the I ran into a lot of technical difficulties, including uh, TC going down today, which kind of mucked up my day. And I didn't get it around to, to putting the slides, finish the slides at least. But in the last show and in the stock chart show, I showed where you ride out your positions. Now, one position, even though we stopped out, I think at a 70% gain, we did give up a lot of profits along the way. But we've been riding this one out since the market tanked. And as the market is not too far away from multi month lows, you can see this thing is making multi year highs. And that's why I say ride, you know, see each position to its fruition. And it should be interesting to see if this one can keep on keeping on. And so far, making new equity highs. That's a good thing. Yeah, AMR is correlated, okay? And so is ARLP. And you know, one of my clients told me that he wouldn't take this stock or refuse to take the stock because it's a coal stock. And, you know, do what you want. And I'm totally okay with that. I totally respect that opinion. But as a trader, you know, somebody once joked, as I said a thousand times, if they found out that intravenous drug use was on their eyes, he'd be buying needles. And it's like, well, I don't think I'm that bad. And is drug use on the rise? <laughs> but as a trader, I think you have to just look at markets and try not to to have an opinion about about the underlying stock. And one thing I've told people in the past, not this individual, but I've told people in the past, look, take the trade <laughs> and and make money on it. it. Well, if it works out, if it doesn't work out, then okay, it happens. But take the trade, and if you make money on it, then donate that money to help save the environment or something. I don't know. But as a trader, I can't be biased. I can't use a double negative here. I can't not show you the best setups that I am finding because I have some sort of bias. Okay. I got a, I got a whistling booger. <laughs> I hate when that happens. A R L P is one of the two stocks I own. K L X E is the other. I still own K L X E. I admit that. I hope I didn't pour salt in any of my clients' wounds. We did get knocked out, or the service got knocked out back here. And I forget why I didn't get knocked out too on that particular day. The maybe the market was coming unglued and I was focusing on a lot of other things. And by the time I got around to dealing with this one, it had already bounced back a little bit. So it, it wasn't super skills or anything. I was being a little lenient with it just because the sector was a good sector. And it's one of the few longs that I had that was actually doing okay. And I was slightly profitable at the time and I'd already taken partial profits. So I was coming from a position of strength. And by the way, that's what the money management does for you by taking those partial profits is it allows you to sort of come from a position of strength. If you don't look at that open equity too, too much, and or if you look at the op open equity, look at it down to the stop, just like the, the APG we got stopped out of recently, we gave up a lot of open profits, but net, net it was a pretty good trade. It was a 70% gain, and I forget how much it stopped out at maybe $4,000 gain on a $100,000 portfolio, so that's 4% move. So if you do kind of mentally monetize these things, mentally monetize down to the stop. In more recent years, I tend to be a little bit more lenient overall with the stops and everything. But I do, yes, try to adhere to the core methodology as closely as possible. And everything that I track mechanically, which you can look at at DaveLeonard.com slash archives, everything that I recommend, I track mechanically is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, a little discretion can be used. Did you use discretion on this one to stick with it, John? Or how did you, how, how are you still in it? And I'm glad you are. I'm glad you are. By the way, one thing I did today, it didn't get hit, but I threw out a stupid order 
like at nine and a half or something. And I'll be doing this thing when I was surprised. It, it went over nine. Look at that. But I threw out a stupid order at nine and a half, just unload a few shares just for SGs. As Rasky says, feed those ducks while well, they're quacking. And it didn't get hit. Maybe if it goes nine and a half, ten tomorrow, I might unload a few, few more shares. ALF uses artificial intelligence and big data analytics to measure and predict human response. Okay. Um, it's been out of favor for a long, long, long time. I wonder why it's waking up. But it's also kind of tail back off again. I wonder if it's um, not to confuse the issue with facts, but I wonder if it has anything going on in the world. Yes, use discretion alert went off, but decided to wait and reevaluate towards the end of the season session. <laughs> session. I was about to say, end of the season, that might be a little too long. It bounced back, so stay dead. Yeah, I think it was one of those things where bells and whistles were going off, and I was trading and trading and trading and trading. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh my goodness, this was getting whacked. And by the time I got around to selling it, it had come back. Not necessarily the, the best way in the world to trade. But I was being sort of lenient with it and giving it a, a lot of um, a little bit of room. 224. Let's see what the spiders did on 224. Yeah, that was uh, that was a crazy, crazy, crazy day. Look at that. That's the day that they just gapped way, 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 way lower. It went straight up, and I was shorting and buying. I'm not shorting. I was buying like a madman. I came in short, believe it or not, overnight. I held a few futures overnight. And I was buying on the open, and and I was just buy, 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 and I didn't even notice that uh, it had gotten whacked. By the time I got around to it, it had bounced back. Thank goodness. Okay. Sometimes you make a mistake in your favor, I suppose. But yeah, I was I was being pretty lenient, so I don't know if that was a self fulfilling prophecy or not. That's what it was. Yeah, it stopped out in the open or something like that really quick and by the time i got around like i just said i was so busy on the open usually those position trades i try not to worry about them too much because even if they do gap against me i will apply some discretion to them and maybe try to play them as an opening gap reversal on my own a couple things make sure obviously on your stops on any existing existing positions as i've been saying see each position to its fruition uh, one other thing I do want to cover real quick, though, before I forget. Let me just change gears here real quick. Let's get back to ACP. And if you come into ACP, and I don't know if I can share these, but if there's a way to share them, somebody let me know. The plugin, by the way, is free. You just have to pay for your stock charts subscription. I can't help you with that. But the plugin itself is free. I was thinking the other night, why am I giving this away? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is the 10% TFM 10% system. These are the indicators that I use. And this line here, the programmer was nice enough to accommodate me you could actually change it to change the parameters and i've got it at 90 percent. i don't know if you can see that on your screen so and at 50 so you take a 50 week closing high which would be right here and you take 90 percent of that and a close below that and a close below the 50 week moving average is a sell signal like we had back here right before the pandemic really began or the pandemic slide really began rather right before the market really began to take the pandemic seriously anyway last week i put out a post on my website and you can get that if you go to daveleonard.com i think free stuff and on that page there's a once you log in Right here, I talk about the sales signal. So I would urge you to go in and check this article out. Now, you can see it closed below this, but that's midweek. Okay. My testing was done on a calendar chart. 
meaning that when this signal triggered, I forget which day it was, on the 23rd, let's just say that was a Wednesday. I don't know off the top of my head. I can't figure it out that quick. But it did close below the buy line and it did close below the 50 week moving average. But it did bounce between then and Friday, okay? 4289, if memory serves. In fact, we could actually look at that. So still 4289. I went ahead and called it a signal, even though technically it's not, okay? And back here, it's a no-brainer because the next week it did close below it. So you can't argue calendar versus rolling chart. But technically, if you're looking at a calendar chart, it did not trigger. But my feelings for taking the signal intra-week on the weekly chart, even though it's, let's say, a, a calendar chart, is that a lot can happen between now and then, right? So this thing triggers on a Wednesday, and you sit around and say, well, let's see where we are on Friday. By Friday, the market might have already dropped significantly. Now, this doesn't mean run out and, and sell the form, but you might want to get it appraised, okay? <laughs> it's just a clue that the market is not doing well. And I, I know I'm a nerd, but this stuff is so cool. If you go back here, it's like, oh, okay, we're above the buy line and we're above the 50-week moving average, or at least right here we had official buy signal. And the market was went all the way up here as long as it was, right? or for this entire period of time, I should say, it was above that buy line and the 50-week moving average. Now we're below the 50-week moving average and we had one day below the buy line. So it's a cool little system, if I say so myself. Sell is a close below the 50-week moving average and below the buy line, which again is 10% off that high right there, okay? In this case, 10% off this closing high here. And that's it for the sell. For the buy side, a little more stringent, you need two bars of Landry light above the 50-week moving average, and of course, it has to be above the buy line, which likely will be. The downside to the system, or one negative about the system, is if the market has a V-shaped recovery like it did here, the buy line doesn't have time to catch up to the market. If you were to go way back in time to, let's say, 2000 or some other bear market, you can see where are we now. 2008 would be a good one. You can see where was the sell signal. Sell signal was right there. And I've published a spreadsheet. I think in that article, the spreadsheet is here. If you get really bored, <laughs> you can see. By the way, uh, somebody was commenting on my stock charts video where I was talking about market timing. And they were talking about dollar cost averaging, which is fine, I guess, if you're a longer term sort of investor. My only problem is occasionally the market loses 50% of its value or more. So if you saved all these years for retirement, and then you lose half of your money right before you retire. To me, that could be a, a bit troublesome. So my answer to that is I think a little market timing is better than none at all. But you can see because this market took so long to bottom out this buy line started to come down and catch up the price. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention real quick, after something like the pandemic, it doesn't mean that we aren't buying back here somewhere in individual issues. If things are setting up, we're taking the individual issues. Just like right now, I don't want to say we, but some of us are still on KLXE. And again, not to rub salt in anyone's wounds or anything, if you follow, you know, if if you are new to the service and you followed it mechanically, I, I'm impressed, and that's the way to do things longer term. It kind of reminds me of when Dennis, Richard Dennis, and Eckhart would call people into the office, and there were like trades that would have would have ended miserably, would have failed miserably, and they didn't take them, and they wanted to know why they didn't take those trades that eventually with hindsight bias, failed miserably. And if the person didn't feel like taking it or didn't think it was a good setup or whatever, remember they were told to follow this thing mechanically, then they had a problem with that. But one guy said, well, I have this, I write three pages on each position or something. And if I go more than three pages or two pages, whatever it was, 
I usually don't take those trades. He had some sort of explanation for why he didn't take it. So what I'm trying to say is if you're newer to trading, I'd be more impressed if you got knocked out and followed the system than just hung on. Now, if you could explain to me that you used some discretion and like John said, the market gap lowered, you were looking at all these things, then that's that's fine. Anyway, I did want to show you the TFM 10% system. One of the most simplest systems in the world. And then of course, I'm faced with this weekly versus a rolling week versus calendar week sell signal and that kind of complicated things a little bit. But again, for all intents and purposes, we are under a sell signal with this system. All right, any any more questions, anything? All right, guys, well, and girls, thanks for coming. Thanks for attending. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. If you are watching this on YouTube, check out the other shows, check out my quick clips. And if you're getting anything out of these, of course, like and subscribe. Also, you can attend these live, daylander.com slash webinar, register even if the, week, the link is old, and my website itself, davelandry.com. Again, thanks everybody for coming, and may the trend be with you. Thank you.